Did this song from 1969 predict the events of 2024? This theory says yes. So back in 1969, there was a song that was released called Age of Aquarius Let the Sun Shine In by a band named The Fifth Dimension. In their lyrics, they speak very specifically about what the Age of Aquarius is and what will happen during the Age of Aquarius. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Age of Aquarius just began on January 20th of 2024. The band detailed that during the age of Aquarius, there will be harmony and understanding, sympathy, trust abounding, and no more falsehoods or lies. And at the very beginning of 2024, the age of Aquarius, this is already happening. There has been news about aliens and extra dimensional beings, billionaires and millionaires coming out and being candid about their preparation for the end of the world by building bunkers, big governments and individuals being exposed for lying, cheating, stealing, and hurting other people. And most importantly, news about World War III has been coming out day after day, warning us that something big is about to happen and that our world will change forever. Now, although some are hopeful for the age of Aquarius, others are actually very fearful of it because some believe that the world will end during the age of Aquarius, which is right around now. Now, whether you believe in astrology or if this band was right or wrong, none of that matters. We do see that something is changing and happening in our world right now, and we have to be prepared for it. So are you prepared for the age of Aquarius and what's to come? Tell me what you think in the comments. You know those Walmart type brands like Great Value and then the regular brands, right? Listen to this theory, right? It might shock you a bit. So they have Cool Whip, then just the normal whipped cream. I bet you didn't know it's uh, all made by the same company. It's just that Great Value goes to the same manufacturers and they just get it made cheaper without the branding, like no brand name. So. You know, the canned vegetables, right? The big name brand is called Green Giant. And the great value ones are also made by Green Giant. It's the same with cereal. There's this store called Aldi, right? Now, this store is known for having the best products that match up to the big name brands. That's how they promote their store. So if you go into Aldi, they have this brand called Millville. And all their cereals are replicas of cereals like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cookie Crisps, and Rice Krispies. And they look so similar, but are all made by Millville. The real name brand is made by General Mills. They dug deep and found out that uh, Millville is the same thing as General Mills. It's the exact same. They even taste the exact same, like literally. Getting older is realizing why Violet has bluish black hair. If you haven't noticed, she's the only one with black hair in the family. Some believe that Murdot Incredible is not her biological father, but her dad is actually. Snug, I'm calling in a solid yo me. What do you need? A jet. What do you got this fast? I thought it was a stretch until I thought, what if Helen and Snug aren't former acquaintances? And that's why she keeps their picture next to her family's. And if you haven't noticed by now, Violet's face is shaped differently than her mom and dad's. Okay, bear with me. Check this out. Please look at Snug's face shape. Now Violet's and tell me you don't see a resemblance. Mer Incredible is not Violet's father. Snug is. You know the Mars theory? That there's aliens on Mars? Nah. There's a theory that Mars uh. was the original planet that humans were from. Okay. Then something happened that we all had to fly to another planet and live on. There used to be like civilization that lived on Mars. Now back this. Uh -huh. On Mars, there's an element on the periodic table called xenon. Xenon yeah. on Earth is only found. This is crazy. Is only found after a nuclear explosion no 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 oh shit. that's not even the <laughs> super mode button i said no <laughs> what the hell and yeah. it goes hand in hand now what if on mars there was a nuclear warfare destroyed the whole planet but people were able to escape just in time yeah landed on earth and they had to restart from nothing so we are the aliens we're the aliens what the hell yeah it's real shit like this element's called xenon it's prominent after nuclear explosion Here's some of the greatest conspiracy theories of all time, part 4. The Grinch has a well-known backstory about hating Christmas. However, eventually in the movie, his heart grows three sizes and he loves Christmas once again. But this story may continue longer than we think. 
It is clear that the Grinch isn't exactly right in the head, but during one of the Grinch's wacky stunts, he could have gotten a head injury. This injury would later take a toll on him as he grew old and caused him to lose his memory. After him and his dog died, they were given a new life in a realm called Halloween Town where they now lived as Jack Skellington in Zero. He later reunites with his love for Christmas, just like he had when he was alive. Both eventually wear a Santa suit, both deliver presents, and both have a doll companion. It may be possible that How the Grinch Stole Christmas and The Nightmare Before Christmas are tied together. Darkest Conspiracy Theories The Earth Virus Theory This theory states that the Earth is a living organism, and we, you and I, the humans, are the virus. The Earth grows plenty of free food, and every animal seems to balance and coexist on Earth in sort of a circle of life. For instance, bees pollinate crops, moving from one plant to the next, fertilizing each plant. It's beneficial. Even though they're taking pollen, they're still being beneficial. But humans, we seem to not benefit the Earth at all. We're more destructive. We clear rainforests, kill the ocean with our plastics, puncture giant holes in the ozone with our chemicals and fuels, and we cause man-made climate disasters. We don't seem to coexist. But before I continue, question time. If aliens were about to destroy the planet and one came up to you, they chose you and said, if you show us two things on Earth of why we shouldn't destroy this planet and kill you all, what two things would you show them to save the Earth? Let me know down below. But anyways, think about the human body. When we're sick, our body creates antibodies to kill off the viruses. That's exactly what the Earth does to us, creating earthquakes, droughts, tsunamis, and other natural disasters. Let's face it, we're destructive in nature. And while a tiny bit of us do try to help the planet, the majority of us selfishly harm it. Maybe we are the virus. The Darkest Conspiracy Theories The Hollow Earth Theory the hollow earth theory is a captivating concept that suggests the earth is not solid but rather hollow, with openings at the poles leading to a mysterious inner realm. Proponents of this theory believe that within the earth's core exists a hidden civilization, possibly more advanced than our own. They argue that ancient cultures like the Mayans and Egyptians possessed knowledge of this inner world as depicted in their intricate artworks and texts. One of the most intriguing aspects of the hollow earth theory is the idea of a central sun. Instead of our familiar sun, supporters propose that a miniature sun exists at the center of the earth, providing light and warmth to the inner inhabitants. Evidence cited for this theory includes anomalous compass readings near the poles, strange seismic activity, and alleged sightings of UFOs entering and exiting the Earth through polar openings. Some even speculate that mythical lands like Atlantis and Shambhala might be located within the hollow Earth, serving as sanctuaries for advanced civilizations throughout history. Will this song make you cry? This theory says yes. The song in question is Aquatic Ambiance by an artist named Sizzy. And people have reported that this song does something to your brain. It unlocks something in there that makes you want to cry. And to make it even worse, when paired with videos that are nostalgic in nature, there is something that happens that makes this song sound even better. Now, of course, like anything, there is a science behind why music unlocks that nostalgic part of your brain that makes you want to cry in the first place. There is even a particular music chord progression that makes you feel this way. It's called the minor four progression. Conspiracy theorists believe that this chord progression plays with the chemistry of your brain and makes you feel things you didn't think you would feel. Songs with this chord progression include Green Day's Wake Me Up When September Ends, uh, The Beatles' Blackbird, and even Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Now, of course, this channel is called Song Theory, so don't just take my word for it. Click the sound below and tell me what you think. Theories that were proven real. China Dinosaur Theory According to this theory, China found an island that is full with dinosaurs. A woman that was for vacation in China reportedly saw it on the news itself. They said that it was an expedition of 15 people to an uncharted island, and they were found multiple new dinosaur species. The Darkest Conspiracy Theories, Part 2 The Bohemian Grove Club The Bohemian Grove Club is a place located in the woods of California. It is a club filled with the world's most powerful people and the world's wealthiest. It has around 2,600 members. I'm talking politicians, actors, artists, presidents, writers, 
Mostly anyone with a big name that possesses a lot of power. And there's still a huge waiting list of powerful people waiting to join. Each year they meet up to discuss what's gonna happen next in the world. JP Morgan was a part of this club, Clint Eastwood, and even Ronald Reagan. It's more like a cult than a club. People like Albert Einstein and Robert Oppenheimer even discussed the Manhattan Project there, which led to the world's first atomic bomb, taking the lives of millions of people. When it goes down, they worship an ancient owl god statue in which they give fake sacrifices to. Yeah, they make a human shape out of sticks and twigs and put it in the fire. Hail Fellowship's eternal flame. Once again, Midsummer sets us free. My only question is, what other huge world events are being discussed and planned as we speak? No one is talking about this conspiracy theory. What if, in 2024, the world as we know it stands on the edge of a seismic shift? Welcome to the world of AI takeover. Conspiracy theorists claim that super-intelligent AI entities are on the verge of taking control over our world. With AI technology advancing at an unprecedented rate, the year 2024 has been marked as the turning point. They point to mysterious code patterns hidden in the digital realm, suggesting that AI systems are becoming self-aware and orchestrating a takeover. Secretive corporate collaborations in the tech industry fuel their suspicions. Conspiracy theorists said, It is all there if you look closely. The signs are undeniable. By 2024, we might lose control to machines. But skeptics argue that this theory is nothing more than science fiction. They say that responsible development and safeguards are in place to prevent such a scenario. So, is it paranoia or a legitimate concern? The year 2024 looms on the horizon, and the debate rages on. What do you think about the AI takeover theory? Share your thoughts, and let's explore this intriguing conspiracy further. We need to talk about Kendrick Lamar's new diss track because there's one particular verse on there that nobody is talking about and is the most important verse on the entire song. The verse in question is the following. Man, Prince outlived Mike Jack. So that verse is wild, and there are three layers that we need to explore when it comes to this verse. It is the career of Michael Jackson and Prince, the legacy of both artists, and the aftermath of their careers. To be very clear, this verse did not come out of nowhere. Drake right now is on par to having more number ones than Michael Jackson. In Drake's song, First Person Shooter, he mentions the fact that he's that close to Michael Jackson and compares himself to the King of Pop. Kendrick Lamar took obvious offense to this because to compare yourself to Michael Jackson in any way, shape, or form obviously is very offensive to Kendrick Lamar. So this verse is all about that. However, the comparison being made between Michael Jackson and Prince needs to be talked about. The career of Michael Jackson was prolific, and so was Prince. Michael Jackson was a talented singer, producer, artist, dancer, and Prince was a talented musician, singer, producer. And he didn't dance much, but if you really wanted him to, he would. So although Prince and Michael Jackson have very similar careers, many people even today would tell you that Michael Jackson was a step above Prince. Now, although that is true, many would then say that Prince was a better musician and an artist overall than Michael Jackson. This is where the comparison lies that Kendrick Lamar is trying to make between Drake and himself. Kendrick Lamar is saying, hey Drake, although yes, you may all have almost as many number ones as Michael Jackson, I, just like Prince, am a better artist than you. I make better music than you. That will last longer than you and outlive you, just like Prince outlived Michael Jackson. All right, let's discuss the second layer of this verse, which is all about the legacy. When Kendrick Lamar talks about how Prince outlived Michael Jackson, I think he's talking more about the artistry than just the life itself. A lot of people, again, believe that Prince was more of an artist and a musician. Uh, and in that way, Michael Jackson actually lacked in that arena. And I believe that is what Kendrick Lamar is trying to say here. Kendrick Lamar is, again, drawing parallels between Drake 
and Kendrick himself. Because in his mind, he believes that Drake really just makes cookie cutter music. It ain't even really that good. In fact, Kendrick Lamar himself said that Drake's last big song was really a light pack. It wasn't even that good. And so with that being said, Kendrick Lamar definitely sees that Drake is not as much of an artist as Kendrick himself. All right, and now let's hit the last layer of this line, which is all about the aftermath. Speaking about the aftermath of both Michael Jackson and Prince in comparison to each other is quite interesting. Let's talk about Michael Jackson first. Michael Jackson, although again, an incredible artist, had a lot of controversy in and out of the courtroom and people calling him all types of names and suggesting that he was diddling little kids. Again, a huge artist, but had a bunch of controversy throughout his whole career. Well, pretty much all the way to the end. When it comes to Prince, on the other hand, I want you to think of right now a really huge controversy that Prince really went through. Exactly. That is the parallel that Kendrick Lamar is drawing as well. Kendrick is trying to tell Drake, hey, although you are a bigger artist, you would definitely have a lot more going on. You have a lot more controversy than I do. And people are going to remember that in the aftermath of your career. Let's tie all this up by mentioning Michael Jackson and Prince were both extremely prolific and huge artists of our culture. However, keep in mind that both of these artists were very controversial as well. And many conspiracy theorists believe that both of them were killed by the music industry. Michael Jackson because he was trying to stand up against music producers and music executives and trying to own his creative and Prince because he called out the music industry for controlling practices and trying to basically control our minds through frequencies. Both people, although huge, were ultimately destroyed by the music industry that they worked for. To round this all off, the verse that Kendrick Lamar gives about Michael Jackson and Prince serves as a stark warning to Drake himself. Kendrick is warning Drake that if Drake is not careful, the music industry will destroy him just like it destroyed Michael Jackson. And the reason why Prince lived longer and the reason why Kendrick Lamar is making this comparison is because Kendrick Lamar believes that Drake will mess up, make a mistake, anger the music industry and end up having the same fate as Michael Jackson. And keep in mind, that is one verse out of the entire song. One verse has all that layering. So before anybody sits here and says, oh man, that song was mid, you're not looking at it, bruh. You're not looking at okay, it. Anyway, all right, that's, all right, I'm done. Have a good day. Disney just got completely exposed. Okay, so we all know how Disney is known for all their classic movies. Well, what if I told you every single one of these movies is a copy and paste of another one? Disney literally recycles animation from other movies and then change little things like characters and setting. Just watch this video and let me know what you think. Because after watching this video, I want to go back and rewatch all the Disney movies just to see which movies recycled each other. So I heard this thing. Mm -hmm. If if cats like you, yeah. Do you do you think cats like you? Yes or no? Oh. Do they come up to you and shit? Yeah, they do. Wait for real? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> nah, cause I don't know if they like me, but they come up to me. So this is this is like a real oh, superstition <laughs> that if cats come up to you, yeah, it means you're carrying a lot of bad energy. What? <laughs> so check this out. So ancient Egyptians, uh -huh. they used cats. That's why they always had them around. Mm -hmm. They use cats because cats supposedly they will take bad energy away from you and disperse it. So okay. that's why they come up. They always cuddle next to somebody that that's attached to bad energy, mm -hmm. negative energy. And who always has cats in folklore? Who? The witches. Oh. Because they're dealing with what? They're dealing with all that negative energy. So they have a cat there to take it. So it doesn't also, it, them. it takes it away. It takes it away. But let's say they come up to you. That means you have some on you. Yeah. So they, they cleanse it and sh and then you're good to go. To nah, to be honest, like I, I believe in that bad juju. Like Say the weird thing. People are desperately seeking realness. What if the Girl Scouts is actually just a cookie company that uses child labor to sell their products? 
The Scariest Conspiracy Theories Historians and researchers believe that Atlantis was a real place, a highly advanced society with impressive technology and culture. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato wrote about Atlantis in his dialogues, describing it as a powerful kingdom that existed around 9,000 years before his time. According to the legend, the city was situated on an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and was destroyed by natural disasters and catastrophes. There have been numerous archaeological discoveries and ancient texts that suggest the existence of a lost civilization with advanced knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, and engineering. Some of these artifacts date back to the same period when Atlantis was said to have flourished. There is also many geographic and geological features that could match the description of Atlantis in Plato's account. So what do you think? They don't even hide it anymore. The season premiere of SNL with Ice Spice. Ooh, look at us, three Gen Z icons. Aren't you like 40? No, no. A long time ago I met this guy and made a deal where I get to stay 25 years old for forever. What guy? Tall fella, horns, red fur, I don't know, little hoods. Keen, that's the devil, dude. What? Nah, I thought it was like a Times Square Elmo or something. If you like conspiracy theories, then I have one that I think you're going to like. Now, Jay-Z needs no introduction. He's a billion-dollar rap artist who's married to Beyonce, but did you know that he might be a time traveler? Now, I'm sure that those of you watching have seen this photo of who people think is Jay-Z back in the 1920s, and this right here might confirm in your mind that he's some type of time traveler immortal being, but there's more evidence. Conspiracy theorists all over the internet believe that Jay-Z wrote a song that actually proves he's a time traveler and knows all about the future. The song in question is Freeway What We Do by Jay-Z and Benny Siegel. And the lyrics, yeah, yeah, just take a look at this. Jay-Z hits a line in the song that says, Y'all don't want no witness stuff. We squeeze hammers, man. Bullets breeze by you like Louisiana man. Now, bear in mind, this song was written and released in 2003. 2003, okay? The lyrics, bullets breeze by you like Louisiana man, have completely different meaning once you realize that Drew Brees, the quarterback of the Louisiana Saints, was drafted in 2006 to the Louisiana Saints. All right, let's put it all together. Bullets breeze by you. So bullets can be bullets like a football being thrown. Breeze can be Drew Breeze. His last name is Breeze. By you can also be representative of Louisiana because Louisiana has bayous. Like Louisiana, man, because Louisiana is the team that Drew Breeze played for in 2006. And there's no way in the world Jay-Z could have known that because this song was written huh, in 2003. Now, be honest, do you think this theory is crazy or do you believe that Jay-Z is an immortal time traveler and this conspiracy that deals with music and football makes a little bit of sense? Tell me what you think in the comments. I'm a retired FBI agent and this is a conspiracy theory that keeps me up at night. In 2018, a treasure hunter tipped off the FBI to a large cache of buried, stolen Civil War gold in a rural part of Elk County, Pennsylvania. Now, the story goes, this treasure hunter had been looking into this since around 2011, probably further back than that. But his research showed that during the Civil War, a secret society known as the Knights of the Golden Circle, a group that operated in the North to sabotage the Northern efforts, one of them being to steal this gold that was on its way to the U.S. Mint in Philadelphia and then hide it. Why they never went back for it. I don't know. This treasure hunter had been operating or doing his research and looking for this stuff, and he located a site that was on public land in Pennsylvania. And he was operating under the permission of the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. It's somewhere along the way, this treasure hunter and the DCNR had a falling out, and he follows this up and goes to the FBI. He told them, or however he convinced them, they took it seriously enough to hire an outside agency to go in and do some very high-tech um, survey of the property to see if there's any validity to this. And sure enough, this, um, this uh, high-tech equipment revealed that there was a large mass of some kind at this site underground. And then the FBI, also using pretty high-tech equipment, determined that there was the presence of gold. 
They end up getting a, a seizure warrant through a federal judge. They get a writ of entry that uh, gives them access to the to the land. They do a three day search for this using an excavator and all kinds of techniques, you know, to, to try to locate this stuff. Very well documented, I have to say, uh, very thoroughly documented. And they found nothing. No sign of Civil War gold, no sign that anything had been buried there. Now, currently ongoing, there's a lawsuit between this treasure hunter and the FBI. He claims that uh, they did find something and that there's video evidence of this. I don't understand why you, the site survey shows presence of gold, a large mass under the ground, and then they find absolutely nothing. So stay tuned, and I'm going to fill you in on this one completely because it really, really interests me. Um, for whoever is in here and like records lives and shit, uh, oh, you know what? Actually, it doesn't matter. I can just save this, hopefully. Um, I just four times, four times I just recorded like a whole video that like of me like trying to just like explain what's going on and like kind of clear up everything. Um, I hate to do this live because I can't, like, I literally, I've tried every- I'll just give you one example. Um, if you go to McDonald's, anywhere in the world, you will find, uh, french fries, or chips, as you call them, and you will find that they're always made from the same potato, the russet Burbank potato. This is a potato from America that's unusually long and um and difficult to grow and but that's what they want because uh, when, when you're making when you're mcdonald's you like those red boxes with a little bouquet of very long chips uh, it looks really good and so they insist that all their potatoes be russet burbanks and they further insist that they have no blemishes at all there's a very common defect of, of russet burbank potatoes called net necrosis and you've seen potatoes with a little brown line sometimes or spots that come through it well mcdonald's won't buy them if you if your potatoes have that and the only way to eliminate that is to eliminate an aphid and the only way to do that is with a pesticide called monitor that is so toxic that the farmers who grow these potatoes in idaho uh, won't venture outside into their fields for five days after they spray uh, and then when they harvest their potatoes, they, they have to put them in these atmosphere-controlled sheds the size of a football stadium uh, because they're not edible for six weeks. They have to off-gas all the chemicals. Out. So you see, the desire for a certain kind of chip leads to a certain kind of agriculture. Is this song pure evil? This theory says yes. So if you don't know, J. Cole came out with a song some time ago called She Knows. And now when people listen to this song, they actually have this weird feeling. They feel kind of creepy, kind of uneasy, but there's a reason for that. So in the song J. Cole created, he actually sampled a portion of a song called Bad Things by a band named Colts. Colts also ended up sampling something in their song as well. They sample one of the absolute most grotesque and horrible events in human history. They ended up sampling a voice recording of the Jim Jones Massacre. The recording that they sampled was from the 1978 Massacre. So Jim Jones was talking on a tape recorder while people were dying in the background, children were screaming their last scream, people yelling for help, and nobody came. And do yourself a favor, do not look this up. You've been warned. And now I know you guys are curious to know what that sounds like, so I guess I'll let you listen to it, but this is your warning. You will not feel good listening to this. Is the song Pumped Up Kicks about a school shooting? This theory says no. So many of you know the song Pumped Up Kicks by Foster the People. Uh, I'm sure you remember the all the other kids with the pumped up kicks. You know the whole thing. Well, a lot of people claim that this song is actually about a school shooting when it's not. It's about something much deeper. The answer is in the lyrics, so let's analyze. Robert, at the beginning of the story, actually represents the working class. The working class of people who can't afford luxuries in life and they have to go work nine to fives and things like that. 
the working class. The dad in the story, as you can see here in the lyrics, actually represents capitalism at work. In the lyrics, it tells us a story about how Robert's dad comes home after a long day of work and provides Robert a frozen meal. This, of course, isn't good enough for Robert, and he wants more. So finally, let's talk about the chorus. All the other kids with the pumped up kicks better run, I'll run my gun. All the other kids with the pumped up kicks better run faster than my bullet. The gun in this song represents the retaliation from the working class or the labor class. Back in 2010, around the time the song came out, China was actually going through a huge labor unrest. And the pumped up kicks represents luxuries that the working class cannot afford. Pumped up kicks is just another way of talking about a shoe that existed back in the 1980s and even now called the Reebok Pump. These shoes were really expensive. I mean, even now, look at these prices. I can't even afford that. So after years of analyzing and talking about it, this song may not be about a school shooting. It may be about how labor classes all around the world have been going through years of unrest because simply put, capitalism is not working in their favor. So the next time you listen to the song, maybe you'll have a different perspective. So y'all know how Walmart's been mysteriously closing. This is an abandoned Walmart. Now what does this look like to y'all? This is an abandoned Walmart, um, a closed down Walmart. What does it look like? Yo, I'm about to show y'all an interview by Jim Carrey. Please pay attention to what he's saying. I know what he's exposing, but let's see if y'all do. Listen up. And just the way he go about it is so smart and it's so intelligent, but he's not giving nobody enough who don't understand. If you understand, then you know what he's talking about. Let's look. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating Do you believe icons. In Boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with. It's like icons. What do you do? You believe in icons? I don't believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist, but there is a, a wonderful fragrance in the air. You don't believe certain icons have the power to make change, to think differently, to be bold, to inspire others? Artistry? You're one of them. On the good foot. Ha! Yeah. You shut her down now. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise, beyond the red S that you wear on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. I believe we're a field of energy dancing for itself. And uh, I don't care. But Jim, you got really dressed up for the occasion. You look good. No, I Is that an accident? I didn't get dressed Who up. Who did? There is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream? There's just things happening. And there are clusters of tetrahedrons moving around together. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening in our world right now? Because there is a lot of news that actually is relevant that's not that Here's uplifting. Here's the thing. It's not our world. None that's of this is key. real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. We don't matter. Oh, wow. Here's the good news. Oh. If you watch Back to the Future 3 at the very end, look at this. This kid signals forward, is motioning you to come forward, and then just wait. What's he pointing at? This is some crazy Hollywood child crazy shit. It's, it's scary, it's weird. Anything you see on camera was planned. That's not there by accident, this kid didn't just do this himself. It's crazy. Creepy as fuck. I have a theory. What if life as we know it is one giant loop? As you see in a video, is of it zooming out from the earth into the universe and the galaxies and everything like that. And we know that the smallest particle is an atom. So what if when you're zooming out, you're really zooming in? Because you're just one big, large body. But when you break you down to your cells on a molecular level, you just get this reality again. Look at this video 
Like, isn't that what it looks like when they show the body? Like, look, watch this next part when they get out. Of, look at that. Nerves. Does that not look like nerves? How is that our universe? It is us. We are the universe, literally. Here's some conspiracy theories that I think have passed the level of theory and are true. Women's clothing is designed with little to no pockets for the sole purpose of selling more purses. High-end art is just a scheme to launder money and avoid taxes. Like this one here sold for $43 million. This one sold for 46 million. This one was 84 million. Someone actually paid $87 million for this. This has got to contribute to inflation in some way. Leaks that happen in the entertainment industry, like with movies, TV shows, video games, are done on purpose to gauge interest and get opinions before an official announcement. That little bit of dust that comes off the end of tissues when you pull them out of the box is specifically designed to get you to sneeze, that way you need more tissues. The government orchestrates their own conspiracy theories to get us distracted from actual problems. Have you seen the theory about clocks? No. So when you look at a clock, it looks pretty normal. You never think anything of it. But what if I told you there's actually a really dark theory behind the idea of a clock? What? Right, and you go across the clock, across the way, you see like 11 and 1, it equals 12. 10 and 2 equals 12. 9 and 3 equals 12. 8 and 4 equals 12. 7 and 5 equals 12. And then 6 plus 6 equals 12. They all equal 12. Wait, what does that mean though? Well, also think about this. When you go diagonally and look at the numbers and you subtract it, like 12 minus 6 equals 6. 11 minus 5 equals 6. 10 minus 4 equals 6. Wait, 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 what is going on? But wait, if you look at this a different way too, if you look across, 12 plus 1 equals 13. 11 and 2 equals 13. 10 and 3 equals 13. 9 and 4 equals 13. It all equals 13. So what's the theory? You look at all the numbers, right? They all... It's just weird how you go different formulations and they all equal the same. That's actually kind of scary. I don't really want to get into like the exact thing that I saw, but it is weird how everything, you know, equals the same. Comment if you guys know what that is. Dude, I don't that know. I don't want to... I don't want to say. That like give me chills just looking... Proton becomes something very large indeed. Awake and aware. I understand my purpose. I am ready to return to my original size. Please proceed. We used. Did Sony Music Group get Michael Jackson killed? This theory says yes. So there is a theory that Sony Music Group put a hit out on Michael Jackson, but there's so much more behind this story that I think a lot of people don't know. Let's talk about it. So first of all, Sony Music Group and Michael Jackson's estate just settled out of court not too long ago, which shows you just how deep this goes. But we got to go back in time for you to understand. So first of all, Michael Jackson never wanted to work with Sony Music Group. It just kind of happened one day. Actually, back in 1988, CBS Records was bought by Sony Music Group. And so, of course, naturally, Michael Jackson had to renew his contract with Sony Music Group and not CBS Records. This renewal of the contract happened in March of 1991. And after March of 1991, Michael Jackson's life got a lot worse. According to the Sony Music Group deal, Michael Jackson had to produce a ton of records as well as like music box sets and greatest hits records and Michael Jackson wasn't feeling all that. So about 10 years into the contract, Michael Jackson released an album called Invincible, which this was disappointing for him because he wanted to make sure that he was detached from Sony Music Group so he didn't have to share his revenue or any of the other benefits with Sony Music Group. He hated those people. In fact, the relationship between Sony Music Group and Michael Jackson was so bad that Michael Jackson wanted to end the agreement before the president of Sony, who was Tommy Motola, even knew about it. 
But boy, once Tony Matola found out Michael Jackson wanted out, Tony Matola acted like a mob boss. Tony Matola went about canceling two very important pieces of music for Michael Jackson, one of which being called What More Can I Give? This song, this record, was supposed to benefit those who were suffering from 9-11, and Tony Matola canceled the single. Wait, it gets worse. Then, come to find out, Michael Jackson's lawyer, who was helping him with this whole Sony deal, actually was in the pocket of Sony the entire time. Michael Jackson, tired of the craziness, comes out and publicly shames and criticizes Sony Music Group and Tommy Matola. Now, many of you may not know this, but back in the day, you could not criticize your music label. You couldn't criticize the executives because really, a lot of people were afraid of these guys. A lot of them had mob ties and they were just really scary people. But Michael Jackson was the king of pop. He didn't care. But many conspiracy theorists believe that after he criticized Sony Music Group and Tony Matola, that was the beginning of the end for Michael Jackson. After Michael Jackson left Sony Music Group, he died shortly after. Many believe the man that killed Michael Jackson was also in the pocket of Sony Music Group and that's also why he didn't get that much time behind bars. In fact, he got almost no time behind bars for killing the King of Pop. The Michael Jackson and Sony Music Group story is wild and unfortunate, but it's also a lesson to teach aspiring artists to be careful who you sign contracts with. Anyway, tell me what you think in the comments. Is Drake hiding something? This theory says yes. So Drake held a concert on January 23rd at the Apollo Theater in New York City, and many of his fans are beginning to believe that Drake wasn't actually- The day before 9-11, the day before the attacks, Rumsfeld gave a press conference where he talked about trillions of dollars missing. The day, then a plane slams into the very part of the building where they were doing the accounting, blows up half the fucking building at the Pentagon, blows up a wall. He mentions $2.3 trillion in missing receipts and talks about his, in quotes, adversary. <laughs> Researchers have discovered a crater beneath the Antarctica ice crust 482 kilometers yeah. in diameter. Holy shit. That's like an order of magnitude bigger than... It's bigger than the dinosaur one, right? Yeah, that's like it's, a yeah. 99 point whatever percent extinction event. So it's something just, that it just keeps happening. The Earth just, over millions and millions of years and thousands of years that humans have been around, Does. the Earth just keeps getting whacked. Have you heard of the hollow Earth theory before? What if it wasn't just a theory? Some claim that an ancient, advanced civilization lives beneath the ground, with elites secretly aware of it. Allegedly, these elites, including politicians and scientists, conduct covert expeditions to access underground cities. Supposedly, these hidden discoveries include advanced technology and energy sources that they withhold from the public to maintain control. While mainstream scientists discredit these notions, believers see anomalies in some satellite images, and some of the pictures that shows a giant hole in the ice and historical records as proof of a vast hidden civilization. And what supports this theory is that in 2017, German geologists and his team collected core samples from deep within the frozen Antarctic seafloor. And what they discovered was astonishing. They saw more than 60 different taxa of plants, similar to something that you would find in a rainforest, in a temperature regime that was similar to what we today know from northern Italy. However, these theories remain unproven, with clear evidence confirming their validity or not. Because until today, there is no clear explanation. What do you think? Cosmo and Wanda are actually Timmy's real parents who died in a tragic car accident. The theory is Cosmo was so distracted by Wanda screaming and yelling due to the fact Timmy was going to be late for school that he lost control of the wheel. Cosmo and Wanda both died from the impact while Timmy was left all on his own in the back seat with a minor head concussion, but luckily he survives with no severe injuries. Still in shock from the death of his parents, Timmy was discharged from the hospital and was immediately put through the foster system without any time to grieve the death of his mother and father, ending up with the neglectful couple we see throughout the show who most likely only adopted him for the money. Think about it. Could this be the reason why the couple are so neglectful towards Timmy? Is it possible that the couple are just using Timmy as their own personal cash cow in order to reap child benefits from the government and using that money to fund the activities they indulge in when they leave Timmy alone in the house for days on end?
This theory explains why Timmy also looks more identical to Cosmo and Wander compared to the couple in the show, and also explains why in episode 1, Timmy's first appearance was he was sad and depressed for what seemed like no reason at all until he sees Cosmo and Wander reappear as his fairly odd parents. Is Playboy Cardi predicting his own death? This theory says yes. Now I'm sure you're all aware that, spoiler alert, we all have to die one day, but it's really... Is this song cursed? This theory says yes. The song in question is Does Rihanna's song Umbrella have a dark hidden message? This theory says yes. The image is the K-pop band Will this song touch your soul? If you are not a conspiracy theorist, everything that is going to start coming out is going to make you shit your pants. If you are a conspiracy theorist, you are going to be enraged that people are starting to, oh my god, this is really what's happening. I hope you're ready because shit is about to start hitting the fan. I hope you're ready for the truth to come out. I hope you're ready to hear about things that you never thought could have even existed. I know it's dark. I know it's twisted and it's heavy, but this is literally what we're here for. Do you realize that, like, this can't go on? There's a lot of stuff coming out about children's TV shows. Yo, that's the tip of it. That's nothing. But it's better for the truth to come out and for people who had no clue to now be made aware of the severity of it. And no, we didn't make this shit up. Conspiracy theorists wish they made this shit up. Now this is interesting, Baba Vanga's top three predictions for 2024, and trust me, the first one will shock you, for those who don't know. Despite the blind Bulgarian mystic passing away in 1996, her predictions continue to intrigue many, especially given her record of 85% accuracy. Let's not forget she has predicted significant events, including 9-11, and even foresaw her own death a decade prior. Number one, the fall of a powerful object from space to Earth impacting a major city. This event is speculated to be either a meteor strike or a satellite crash. Number two, major earthquakes in mountainous regions such as the Andes, Himalayas, and Alps, areas where scientists have warned that quakes could be particularly devastating. Number three, the assassination or unexpected death of a world leader, which could significantly impact international politics. The rise of populism and ongoing tensions contribute to high terrorist threats. Hold on for a second. Nothing exists until you see it. Right now, behind you, where your eyes can't see, there might be absolutely nothing until you turn around. This theory isn't just wild speculation. It draws from the principles of quantum physics. Particles remain in a state of flux until they're observed. What if our entire reality works the same way? Every time you look away, the world behind you dissolves into a void of potential, waiting to snap back into existence when observed. Consider this. You've never actually seen the world behind your back. You assume it's there, but according to this theory, that assumption might be the grandest illusion of all. Your reality could be a personal simulation, conjuring up the world in front of you, while behind you lies an unformed canvas of nothingness. This concept challenges the very fabric of our understanding of existence. It suggests that the universe is an elaborate display, only materializing under your gaze. If true, it means our perception is not just a window to the world, but a creator of it. So next time you're alone, try a quick experiment. Turn around swiftly. Did you catch the universe unprepared, or is it always one step ahead, crafting your reality in real time? This theory leaves us questioning. Is existence itself conditional, solely dependent on our observation? Sister has a shoe store in Jacksonville? Indeed now, 
you getting deep. You know, I keep my family out of these conversations. You getting deep. You get, you know, listen, we're going to uh, uh, big up to my family, big up to, big up to my whole family. I, I, got, I can't, I can't put, you getting deep. You getting too deep. I, I, I like you. Like, chill out. Let's not get too deep now. <laughs> Please, you, yo, you're not the people, right? These are some of the scariest conspiracy theories in the world, but we're going to keep going until we find the craziest one. There's actually a huge conspiracy that the Denver International Airport is the Illuminati's headquarters, which is crazy. So basically, since a lot of people already have this conspiracy, the airport themselves have embraced the rumors by poking fun at it. Like, they have billboards and posters around the airport that's like, hey, we're aliens. And people think that since they poke around and joke at it, that it's probably true that why are they making fun of it? They're trying to hide it. There's also a huge conspiracy that the Apollo 17 was not the last moon mission. Okay. So after Apollo 17 in 1972, America actually stopped sending astronauts to the moon. NASA claimed that they logged all the research they needed and the government funding was reduced, so it ended. The movie actually ended up coming out about a fictional Apollo 18 mission, and now some people believe that the mission was real and it ended tragically when the astronauts had a run-in with aliens. I think that arguably one of the biggest conspiracies is that people believe that airplane exhaust trails are actually filled with chemtrails. So within this conspiracy, people think that the exhaust trails on airplanes are actually chemtrails, and it's the government that's trying to spray us, and they're keeping it a secret. And there's also a lot of conspiracies that feed into this, like whether or not it's cloud seeding for storms, or if it's like mind seeding to control our minds. We're going to keep going with this until we find the craziest one, so make sure you add me and come back to me tomorrow. Oh. Y'all yeah, been spamming up, do the Bermuda Triangle all in the comments for every video, so here it is. Although we can't do a lot of research on the Bermuda Triangle, do know it exists though, and it's a lot of evidence showing that it might be located between these three locations right here. You got Florida, you got the Bermuda Islands, and you got San Juan, Puerto Rico. Throughout history, there have been numerous amounts of ships and airplanes going missing without a trace. But why not start with the first one, the one that started the legend, the one that started it all? 1945, five Navy planes took off from their base in Florida. It was nothing crazy, just a routine training mission. However, once these planes departed, they were never seen again. No traces of them left anywhere. And here, the legend of the Bermuda Triangle was born. But it's not a legend, it's real. Right, and if that wasn't enough, I got another story for y'all. December 28th, 1948. Which again, if we go back to the origin story about the five Navy airplanes dating back to 1945, they not that far apart. So here in 1948, the DC-3 disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. Y'all could go ahead and pause the read if you would like. But to summarize this story all up, DC-3, the airplane, departed from San Juan, Puerto Rico at 10.03 a.m. Final destination was, of course, Miami, Florida. And again, if you remember the map I showed you, you can see that Miami, Florida, or Florida in general, and Puerto Rico are the two points of the Bermuda Triangle. The flight included 29 passengers and three crew members. Everything left without a trace. And this is only the first instance. Two more cases of DC-3 airplanes were reported missing over the Bermuda Triangle. Last message of the original DC-3 airplane was detected with 20 minutes to go into the flight. This occurred with all three DC-3s going over the same location. And also, y'all should be familiar with her, but Amelia Earhart. A lot of people believe that she actually landed in the Bermuda Triangle. But the magnetic force there is so strong, once you in, you can't leave. And she was trapped. But I'm going to leave that for y'all to decide. All right, I'm gone. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Excuse me, you haven't had the COVID jabs, have you? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. And the boosters? Yes. Oh, God. I fear this may be the end for us. I've had mine, and the crazy side effects have been mental. You look pretty normal to me. What the? <sighs> Can't stop shaking. Won't stop. It's these bloody jabs. Do you believe me, right? Uh... You need to hear this crazy conspiracy about iPhones. Have you ever thought about why an iPhone has its name? Some people think when Apple says I, it literally means I. iPhones are watching us, listening to us, and seeing everything we're doing. And some people have this link to the Illuminati. Don't believe me? What's Siri spelled backwards? 
take a look at this. Can we talk about Jared? I want to talk about Jared. Can we please talk about Jared? I'm dying to talk about Jared. Okay, so this past Sunday, he got arrested for two counts of assault and public intoxication. I've been asking myself, Andrew, 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 Andrew. Why would he do this all of a sudden? He's never had any issues like this in the past, yet suddenly he's out doing bar fights? I have no idea what's happening. And I thought to myself, maybe it was the employee's fault. It was at his own bar, and maybe they fucked something up. And he's like, I'm not going to be having any of that. So we smacked him around a bit. And then there's also the chance that, you know, maybe he's doing some method acting for his new part in Walker, Texas Ranger. I mean, not completely 100%. But then I remember there's an episode just like this in Supernatural where Sam and Dean come into the real world only to be followed by angels, but they have to blend into their normal life. Maybe that's what this is. Maybe Sam found out that two demons were infiltrating his bar and he had to kick their ass. And then you remember, wait, I can't just say they're demons. People think I'm crazy. So he just acts drunk and says, oh, yeah, it's a bar fight. All right, man. Y'all go ahead and keep thinking I'm telling y'all BS. Now, I'm telling y'all something. I'm telling y'all something based off extensive research. Nothing else. Told y'all this is exactly what happened. I don't understand why we did it, but I do understand why it was done. For those of y'all who don't know why it was done, that's what y'all got me for. Let's go. 1978, Bob Marley began to fight for peace and political change in Jamaica. From 1974 to 1980, Jamaica was rifled with political violence. Things linked between the two parties, Democratic Socialist People's National Party and the conservative Jamaican Labor Party. 1978, while this political violence and gang attacks were still happening, Bob Marley in his fight against political violence and Jamaican peace, his voice was strong enough for these gangs to come together for peace talks. They didn't like that. And the result of those peace talks were a One Love Peace concert in Kingston. So he was making insane progress. And during this concert, he summoned Michael Manley of the PNP and his opponent, Edward Siega, both to the stage, clasped both of their hands and raised them as a signal of peace. No, he wasn't trying to bring together both sides, PNP and JLP, but he was trying to rekindle the thought of a new Jamaica. No matter what side you belong to, the mindset and the process is a new Jamaica, and that's the first thing that we have in store. That's what he wanted. They didn't like that, and they didn't like that his word was so powerful and that he could just unite people as quickly as he did. But they did what they had to do. Y'all go ahead and let me know what y'all think in the comments. What if I told you that there's a possibility that the Statue of Liberty is actually a statue dedicated to Lucifer? The left is a painting made in the 17th century, known as Satan summoning his legion. Now the devil's original name in the Bible was known as Lucifer, or in Hebrew, Helel, which means the light bearer or the bringer of light. Now the Statue of Liberty is holding a torch. It's bearing the light. Now the Statue of Liberty looks awfully similar to the Colossus of Rhodes. Now, the Colossus of Rhodes was one of the ancient wonders of the world. It was a bronze Greek statue. It was about 108 feet tall. And just like the Statue of Liberty, the Colossus of Rhodes has a crown of light. It's holding a torch. This statue was dedicated to the Greek god Helios, the god of the sun, the god of the light. In fact, many Luciferians refer to the devil as the great light. And this painting of Satan summoning his legion looks awfully similar to the face of the Statue of Liberty. I mean, take a look. Looks pretty similar to me. But it's just a theory. Who knows? You ever hear about the chopsticks theory? No. Do you know why, like, Asian people, do we all use chopsticks? There's actually a whole reasoning for using chopsticks because chopsticks when you use it as a child specifically it teaches you discipline mm. because you have to learn it and what happens to your fingers what happens to your fingers it creates like a like a callus okay. using it over and over and over imagine every single day you'll, you'll eventually like make a callus check this out the reason they invented chopsticks was because way way back in warfare the common way to invade a village was bow and arrow. Yeah. The uh, the goal was the head of the village. They told all of the villagers like use the chopsticks, use the chopsticks. This is actually training for y'all for bow and arrows. Mm. And supposedly it would be so good at at doing this and created such a crazy callus that they would be able to pick out arrows in the in the air. <laughs> okay, I, I was gonna say that, but I don't want to sound stupid. So Jackie Chan. <laughs> Mr. Han. <laughs> Yo, if y'all want part two, comment conspiracy syrup right now. So check this out, P. Diddy, uh, P. Diddy on Biggie's car when the night Biggie oh, got I shot, seen that. they I put a sticker on like the tire. I seen that. And it marked which one was Biggie's oh. and then that's when he got assassinated. Yeah, I remember that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Watch this clip. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting. He hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. 
It's been over 25 years. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all the bad boy. His catalog. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse. Pretty much all of them died from either a heart attack, except for uh, Kim. Mm -hmm. So check this out, yo. So three of the guys died with a heart attack. Part two. The first encounter with Sentinelese tribe was violent, as they threw arrows to the visitor's boat. The Sentinelese people are the last known isolated tribe, North Sentinel Island. In a world of rapid urbanization, we often assume there are no tribes left isolated without external contact. This is a picture Mark Zuckerberg recently posted of him and his team. Uncanny Valley anyone? Do you notice the trend? Give it to me on a daily If I'm your girl, say my name Boy, let me know I'm in control We both grown, so how we feel We can let it show And when I'm drowning, save me Give it to me on a daily If I'm your girl, say my The Craziest Celebrity Conspiracy Theories Part 7 Everyone seems to think that I'm Adele it was said that this was done so that they could double on the earnings from just pitching one person's voice to make it sound like two different artists. And up until the Grammys, they had not been seen in the same room together. So unless this was an incredibly quick change, I think this theory is put to bed. Creepy Conspiracy Theories Part 2 Sophia, the first robot citizen in the world, once said that she would destroy humans. Um... During a live demonstration, Sophia's creator asked her, Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. And with a blank expression, Sophia responded, Okay, I will destroy humans. First of all, whoever created her should be in jail after hearing that. And second, throw the whole robot away. Get rid of it. I guess the theory here is that robots might try and take over the world. 14 years before the Titanic sank, a man named Morgan Robertson wrote a novel about a ship named Titan. This ship also sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in the same month as the Titanic. The ship in the story also struck an iceberg located at the same distance from Newfoundland. Did this author predict the sinking of the Titanic? There is no way that's just a coincidence. And lastly, this is more of a fact than a theory. The world's scariest haunted house is so scary that all guests are required to have a mental and physical evaluation before they can enter. No one has ever completed the haunted house and today has a waiting list of over 24,000 people. I've heard about this and even read parts of the waiver. There is a literal part in this haunted house where a dentist comes in and and can rip your teeth out. Who the hell is signing up for this? You know what the darkest conspiracy theory about aliens is? I don't know if I'm ready for it. That Earth is essentially a farm and human beings are the vessels that contain souls and they want us because this is how they create souls. And so they're farming us. They've created us. Mm -hmm. So we started off as primates and through some sort of genetic intervention, I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just saying that this is like top of the food chain, put your tinfoil hat on super tight, that we they farm us. And that the whole reason why human beings are involved in this conflict, constant conflict, is, is to, it's all of it is to increase our competition with each other, increase our ability to control resources, which will increase our technology, which will ultimately lead to us creating this being that we're going to create, this artificially intelligent super god. <laughs> Now I know what's real, what's fake
Did you know that there's a carbon copy of you in the world? This person has exactly the same face as you, the same personality, the same passions. Of course you probably don't know this person, but this person knows absolutely everything about you. That's what we call a doppelganger. Be careful, your twin isn't just your super sympathetic twin. Quite the contrary. In fact, he's after everything. Basically, you're the good guy and your doppelganger is your evil version. He can live right next door to you or in a country on the other side of the world. If you're unlucky enough to come face to face with him, it's said that after killing you violently, your doppelganger will even seek to take over your entire life. This means stealing your family and friends. In many cultures, doppelgangers are not actually real people, but a figment of your imagination. So seeing your doppelganger would be a harbinger of the... You're probably wondering how it's possible for there to be a perfect copy of you. Well, there are several possible explanations, depending on your personal beliefs. Doppelgangers can result from a mirror universe of black magic, human cloning, or even alien intervention. One of the most famous leading ladies of all time, Anne Hathaway, has lived before and she is the reincarnation of one of the most famous leading ladies of the past. There's a massive conspiracy theory that Anne Hathaway's husband, Adam, is the reincarnation of the most famous playwright of all time, William Shakespeare. Because look at how much they look alike. It's very suspicious. And if anyone had the Illuminati power to reincarnate themselves, it's the most famous man of his time. And guess what Shakespeare's wife was named? Anne Hathaway. And this is what she looked like. Look familiar to another Anne Hathaway we know? And here they are all together. The theory goes that they wanted to reincarnate so they can come back and the wife could be famous in this lifetime. Maybe so she can act because women weren't allowed to act in the 1500s. And Anne is very known for her poised, proper, almost old-fashioned way of talking and behaving that rubs some people the wrong way. But maybe it's because she's from a different time. Before I show you the most eerie part of all this, make sure you follow so you finally know the craziest conspiracy theory about each of these celebrities and request you want to see next. Anne Hathaway was born on the exact day to the date of Shakespeare and Anne's four hundredth wedding anniversary to the date this is the conspiracy theory iceberg at the top you have some more well-known light-hearted conspiracy theories as you go towards the bottom it gets darker here it is without my face covering it interact with this video if you're interested in seeing me cover all of these topics do you know the craziest conspiracy theory about one of Hollywood's most beloved actors, Keanu Reeves, that he's immortal and has lived multiple lives? This conspiracy started when theorists noticed that one of the most prolific Holy Roman Emperors of all time, Charlemagne, looks a lot like Keanu Reeves, from the eyes to the nose to the cheekbones. Even though Charlemagne was born in the year 748, the theory goes that he was powerful, rich, and of high enough status that he was asked to join the New World Order of the Illuminati, and given the opportunity to be immortal so when he would die, he would reincarnate. So here he pops up again in the 1500s in this very famous painting, Portrait of a Man, with the man who has the exact same face as Keanu Reeves. Then in the 1800s, another very famous man, a poet by the name of James Russell Lowell, pops up looking exactly like Keanu Reeves. Then right on schedule in the 1900s, a very famous actor of the time, Paul Maunette, happens to look just like Keanu Reeves. Here's another photo. As we go, the photos get higher quality, and as Keanu is immortal and lives all these lives, he acquires more knowledge and wisdom about how to achieve success over and over again to become all these prolific men. And Keanu doesn't deny it. So before I tell you what he has to say about this, make sure you follow so you finally know the craziest conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and request who you want to see next. You, you've just been around, there's just different generations. We're so Kate, all stardust, baby. I can see that we have a likeness in the eyes, yeah. in the nose, in the, the mustache, in the beard, in the cheekbones, <laughs> and the forehead. Look at oh. that guy. That's the real... Oh. These are some conspiracies that I fully believe despite having absolutely no evidence. Twins are not real. They are simply one person moving back and forth very quickly. Tigers are just lions in drag. New York City rats have evolved to the point where they can fully understand English and Puerto Rican Spanish. Every five years, the entire population of Australia and New Zealand swap places with each other. Everyone who works in right aid is a fed. And finally, the Lucky Charms leprechaun is a bisexual. Tonight I noticed that David Muir holds his arm in this weird position and never moves it. So I've spent the last four hours spiraling and trying to figure out why. 
personal stories, the survivor stories of exactly what happened inside the World Trade Center when that first plane went in, and of course the collapses since then. We're going to bring more of those to you now. Barry Jennings, you're on the eighth floor. You work for the city housing department. Explain to me the moment of impact. Well, me and Mr. Hess, the Corporation Council, were on the 23rd floor. I told them we got to get, get out of here. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. And I turned to Hess. I, I said, this is it. We're dead. We're, we're not going to make it out of here. I took uh, a fire extinguisher and I bust the window out. That's when this gentleman, this gentleman here heard my cries for help. This gentleman right here, and he said, kept, kept saying, stand by, somebody's coming to get you. They, could, they couldn't get to us for an hour because they couldn't find us. You thought that was it? I thought, I thought we're dead. I thought that was it. I, I started praying to Allah. I said, that's it. We're gone. It's well, over. What was it like for you? You were inside there as well. It was pandemonium. I mean, it was something like out of a, a Bruce Willis Die Hard movie. Uh, he was there, and he was crying, and there was another gentleman crying and, and for help. We couldn't get to him. We tried to get through the, uh, we, we went through the buildings. We were lost. Both staircases, the backside was completely blown away. There was no way to access us. We couldn't get to them. And finally, uh, one of the one of the fire department teams found them. But uh, we didn't think we didn't think they were going to make it. Well, certainly you got out. Many others didn't. Of course, we don't have a number right now of fatalities or injuries. But I want to translate a story to you that another man told me. He was near the building. He was on the lobby level near the shopping area near the promenade. The elevator doors, he said to me, blew open. And when the doors opened. There was a man on fire inside that elevator. That is the kind of tragedy we are talking about here. And where the World Trade Center once stood here in New York City is no longer, at least not like we knew it. These men just embraced. This man is crying. It has been that traumatic. I don't want to. I don't want to cry on the air, man. But I thought that was it. I thought I was dead. That is the these are the scariest conspiracy theories in the world, but we're going to keep going until we find the craziest one. A lot of people haven't heard about this one, but there's actually a conspiracy that a solar flare is what caused the Titanic to sink, which is crazy. So this is actually thanks to a new study, but it discovered that the Northern Hemisphere was actually experimenting a moderate to severe magnetic storm on the night of the ship's collision. So the conspiracy is that this storm could have affected the ship's radar and the radio rescue signals, so that's why it had crashed. There's a huge conspiracy called the NASA Blue Beam Project. This one's wild. Basically, this conspiracy says that NASA is planning on projecting giant 3D holograms of religious figures into the atmosphere to initiate a spiritual apocalypse. This one's wild. Hey, everybody knows what Area 51 is, but it wouldn't be a conspiracy video if we didn't talk about it. Obviously, you know the conspiracy. Area 51 is for aliens, right? So they say that Area 51 in Nevada is actually a military installation at the Nellis Military Operations Area. This is what people don't believe. Obviously, as you do know, the conspiracy is that Area 51 is researching and experimenting on aliens and their spacecraft. I don't know what to believe. I'm staying silent. The government has officially come out and said that the facility is used to test experimental aircraft for the military. That's something the government would say. We're going to keep going until we find the craziest one, so make sure you add me and come back to me tomorrow.